All right. Welcome back, everybody, to the exciting finale of Once Upon a Games episode 9? Nine? 9? Nine? Yeah, 9 of Lovecraft Esque, where we've been exploring a Wild West uh, crazy horror show. And uh, we've just finished the crazy horror and we're wrapping it up with an epilogue. So, um, Raz and Robert, uh, take it away. Um, so, uh, if you, I, I have an idea for what, uh, for the witness, the epilogue of the witness, okay. if, um, did you have one, did you also have one for the witness or? Yeah, you can do it. Okay. All right. And so this is, i to be, I think, kind of fairly short, but, a, a, and it's going to be a, um, a camera shot essentially. So we kind of open up to the to the uh, town of Ga- Gabs, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of Gabs, and it's at the cent- like the center of the town, and you see, you know, the the tavern and uh, the sheriff sheriff's office. And as like it, you kind of get closer to the sheriff's office, you see the sh- there's a sign. Like it's it's probably raining a little bit. And so it's hard to see, but as you get closer, um, there's a sign that says hiring new deputy. And um, uh, you start to move into the, the sheriff's office and uh, the the door opens and you see the, the sheriff standing uh, in front of the player piano uh, holding a bunch of uh, like sheets of music and um as it kind of like and he's like very confused looking at it and as the camera pans over to the jail cell um you see earl wyatt sitting very similarly to the way belfry had been sitting and he's kind of like just in that same trance state humming the the music uh his face and his hands are covered in blood and black ichor and he's holding uh, a dead red canary that's and then it cuts to cuts to black oh my god fuck um i wanted to can i add one thing onto that as well yeah yeah Um, yeah. i think i think he he's like maybe like he if uh the the sheriff or whatever asked like you know what are you doing or you know earl's like knock that off like quit singing you know or like knock that ruckus right i think he will like stop for a second and like look and like pet his bird or whatever and kind of chuckles again saying there's a storm coming just how belfry did yeah did you have something to add as well Ross? sorry i went through that like no that was that's fucking yeah. brilliant so now uh for the horror <laughs> yeah what happened I'll to the horror for- yeah. Uh, so they like we go back to the scene back in the cave where Earl was before, mm-hmm. and like like you see, it's like a flashback of of the the creature standing over Earl, and just like a single claw dips into his throat and like rins down into his stomach. And then, like, blackness overcomes him, and he's, like, his eyes, like, go wide and still. And then as it pulls back, he falls to the floor, but catches himself. And he's, like, spewing blood, and obviously, like, something's been ruptured. Mm-hmm. But then, like, he coughs and rises again, and, like, his teeth are brilliant green as he smiles oh and then the the creatures go back down into the pool leaving him and return to the under darkness where deep within the earth a whole of them gather and this like monstrous city of glowing green lights oh fuck crazy crazy bird <laughs> monsters <laughs> shit wow so i think that's and that concludes 
that concludes our game, uh, our playthrough of Lovecraft esque with our with that and f- f- uh, wow. <laughs> so um, any yeah. so let's let's spend the remainder of our show um, sort of breaking down our experience here. Um, you know what we liked about the game, maybe what we didn't like about the game, um, that kind of stuff. So, um, well, one thing I would like that we talked about maybe is I would like to share what we like some of our thoughts on how we thought the game was going or where the, what the final horror was going to be. Totally, totally. So, um, uh, yeah. So I'll just uh, yeah. You start. Uh, you start. Yeah, I'm going to go through like my thought processes as each clue came about. Mm-hmm. And I was like, clue A, reanimating bird, dead coming back to life. Clue B, strange music, mind control. And then clue C, old ruins, ancient people. And then clue D, cannibal cow, parasites, totally parasites. <laughs> nice. And clue E, pale green teeth in all caps, parasites and then (laughs) and and then i lost it at at the strange reaction to holy water but (laughs) but i was i was going for parasites for so for quite some time totally um so in a similar way um i was definitely looking at the dead coming back to life however um my my idea was more about um animals and sort of nature uh, kind of like turning on things and less about like alien stuff but you know once once uh raz really started diving into the the carved ruins and old mines i was like i guess we're going that route all right <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean and like immediately went from okay instead of nature it's alien and um pretty much the i i forget who mentioned it but whoever said the shit was damp uh, oh yeah like that that just like that took it. That was like, yep, yeah, okay, I know where I know exactly where we're going with this now. That was a huge, huge turning point. Just mentioning that it gets more wet, um, for whatever reason, like that just made the the gears go, uh, in my brain. Okay. Um, so thank you, whoever said that. So yeah, my idea was more of actually, um, just generic natural phenomena, and mm-hmm. sort of like reanimating like weird things, like something's going on that literally people don't know why. And it's sort of terrifying that there's no reason for it that they, they know. Um, yeah. But the fact that this was all because of this alien ritual of these crazy, crazy monsters living in this cave. Um, totally cool. Like I loved it. I still loved it. Um, that was, so that was my theory. Um, so something like M night Shyamalan, I guess like a yeah. bad M night Shyamalan movie is the way I was going. So maybe thank you for not taking it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so I was um, like at the start, <laughs> my first after the canary was resurrected and this, and the songs and everything. Mm-hmm. Like literally, the first thing I wrote was avian metahuman bird, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then zombies, and then yeah. uh, the strange music went along with that, and then I introduced the ruins, and I'm like. So I was thinking, uh, so they were precursors to humanity. Yeah. Um, like, I that think no longer lives on the surface. I think, um, I think what I would say, and Leafington just mentions this in the chat is that I think the byline to this game would be, um, nothing is as scary. Like individually, nothing can be scary as all of our imaginations working together. Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, because because we all like. Yeah. Once you get like the thing is, uh, I have a friend like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, we 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 play when we play like D and D or whatever. All I have to do is get her to react to whatever I'm trying to do. If I want to, I want it to be scary. I want it to be exciting. I want it to be tense. All I have to do is get her excited or mm-hmm. her involved in it because she will just mm-hmm. like feed everyone else and. Like I think, and I think that happens here. This game does a really good job of, of getting all of us. Like, I mean, fuck when Raz was making the moo sounds, yeah, like that terrified me. Like it was, <laughs> it, like it changed there's, in my head. Yeah, um, 
I think so. I think this game somewhat struggles, and like most story games do, at the very start, where we're like trying on these clothes and they don't fit right. Um, mm. Like you know, like we don't feel comfortable yet, like getting into the zone of this game. Like we don't have enough to go off of. But like once you just, uh, once we got the the canary, and like once we like once I started setting up that scene of of like the church, and then moving to the um to the sheriff stuff like that, it was just like we're like. That's I guess I I just ended up pointing the game in that direction, and since yeah. then it just was this off the rails amazing experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and then so as we start going on the the cannibal cows and the yeah the reverend and yeah stuff. I want to I want to say something about the yeah. cannibal cows was that yeah. um I got that from the inspiration PDF so occasionally when I'm going over here checking chat and yeah. um I have the other PDFs open. Um, I was tabbing when I'm a watcher, um, and when I'm um, and before it's my turn to be the um, narrator again. I'm looking at all the different like ideas for things like that, and one of them for the inspiration was the, uh, predator slash prey reversal, and I was like, no, screw that, prey attacking prey, and yeah. I was just like, cows, that's terrifying, yes, yeah. and like just sure. went with it, just. So, like, a big part of playing story games is just go with the first thing that comes in your head uh, and just run with it. Just who cares? And because that sounded like a good idea, and we went with it, and it felt, like, super inspiry for you guys after yeah. I went with the cow route. Yeah, um, and I was thinking with that, I was thinking, like, there was some sort of pre-tech resurrection and, like, possession, like, oh, control. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 And then uh, when the, the reaction to Holy Water, I decided that the bird people that i had envisioned were actually what was originally referred to as nephilim oh yeah and they're just like changed so much by history yeah no that's the the bird angel thing yeah totally that's why like um, fallen angel bird creatures yeah no i like that that's that's interesting yeah um yeah shit Um, yeah i was definitely trying to think of a um like I guess physical reason why the holy water react like it was a chemical reaction. It wasn't a uh... yeah. It was clearly chemical. Like I mean, if you wanted to break it down, but who knows? Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think the reaction to holy water kind of borders gothic horror. But you know, like and that like we're supposed to kind of uh, I think avoid that as part of the genre. But I don't know. I think that was very tasteful. Yeah, uh, it, it so, just felt like. Right? It felt right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I liked it. I agreed. Um, I actually was thinking of something like that up even before he said it, and I was like, oh, "Okay, well, he, he went ahead and did it anyway." So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what happened. Uh, the the musical clue, like yeah. I was like building up to it, building up to it, and like then Eric like jumped in. I was like, "Oh, okay, go ahead." I thought, "Man, like, oh, well, he's gonna say something," and then he said exactly what I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> which was that. Uh, Belfry well, was connected to the music. Well, I introduced that in the very right. first scene when he was being a rabble rouser at the saloon. Right. I was saying like he wants to play this music, and then I just did not, I didn't do anything with it. Right. I just dropped it because I went with the with the canary. Right. And um and from that you're like oh there look <laughs> what this look at this nice little hook you left me. <laughs> um, right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know. So. Um, when I like the, that kind I, of stuff. I, I like well, and that's what I did with the um, oh, what was it? What was the clue that I gave in? Oh, the pale green teeth. Yeah, was, was that like uh, of the reverend? I was like that wasn't a clue, but I'm gonna use that as a clue now. Yeah, <laughs> like, so I was actually thinking supplanting like, details and yeah, coming back to them later. So my final idea, like of this, like like the behind the scenes of this like horror thing. Mm-hmm. Was that like these Nephilim creatures were like trying to uh, grow their society by eating humans and trying to infect animals? Well, they are like kind of yeah, yeah. So they were trying to like grow their civilization by turning humans and animals and creatures. Yeah. So that's yeah. why they had the green teeth and were suddenly eating and reanimating and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I definitely definitely thought it was like it wasn't a just like, oh, we're doing this for fun. Like this is a they want these people. And I, I almost like the idea that they're they're not necessarily just like, oh, turning them. That oh, they're yeah. 
that they're trying like they don't know like they're experimenting yeah totally. and, like, and then my last my last line on that the sun thing right. i was actually thinking that the canary itself was actually his missing father what <laughs> like remember i mentioned Earls? like when the yeah when the mother know, said it, came it's... and said his father was gone yeah like after so long ago i was thinking that the that the canary itself was actually like a budding like it, it he was no longer human and he was starting to become one of them and it was just kind of like the metamorphosis oh. process That's what I, I, I didn't pick that up when you said it <laughs> yeah oh, well, i just yeah. thought sun was to be creepy in a in, in a very like um you know, like <laughs> i was thinking like a realist like he's actually like yeah. his son uh, his uh, his father was turned into one of them beforehand i think an important yeah. part of story games though is um they can get sort of um like stuck in its own bubble like if you only just keep iterating on someone else's ideas or like just yeah. one or two things that like it just gets kind of like you're just saying the same things over and you're not like branching out again so sometimes it's like really important to um just like go left field sometimes yeah. right. and introduce well, I, new elements and i think we did a good job with that yeah and i but and i do think oh go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, uh i think this game does a really good job of like defining those roles um because like as the narrator it is your job to bring in something new like yeah. as as a clue you have to bring in something new yeah. and they give you a role to be the person who riffs off of something and to like who builds on on the deal to being the watcher like you it, you get to have all of those feelings and so you feel a balance of like working with other people's ideas and also creating your own new ones exactly exactly and i think the watcher is kind of like the person who's supposed to kind of string it in a very smooth way together um, yeah. even more than the narrator and sometimes or or sometimes the watcher it's the other way around sometimes the the um, narrator will be like uh feed me feed me a new thing and i'm gonna in- weave into the story because it's like yeah. i have a sp- i made a scene that's call like calling for a new thing that's what i did in the in the beginning of the game is that i didn't know what was creepy like i knew that he was gonna have something creepy right fall out of his pocket and that's where you came up with the bird and I was right. like, oh, shit. All right, know where I'm going with this. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's just the first thing so, that popped in my head. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that was perfect. I think that's exactly the designer's intentions of the game. Yeah. Um, no. Where do we think this game falls apart, though? Cards. Yeah. I, I don't think I, like, I looked at my cards the at the cards beginning. And then, useful, and then, yeah. yeah, I looked at my cards and I was like, ah. I could just do these things as a narrator anyways when it's my turn. Yeah. I'm in no hurry. I, 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 mean, I want to be patient. Yeah. yeah. The only yeah. thing that the card seemed useful for was like ideas, I guess. Yeah. And yeah, I think it gives you ideas to like prime you in a way. Yeah. yeah. Well, and because I had I had a card that was literally uh, yeah. replace the witness, and it, like you basically uh-huh. take over as a narrator, and then you take the you like I get the scene requirement of taking the witness out of play in any way i possibly can mm. and then we just make we make a new witness <laughs> like wow interesting. yeah and it's like for that's like a, a vignette re- of like a or it's like for the rest of the game um for the rest of the game holy fuck so we kill the guy or yeah guy. We, yeah we you can kill them I mean, capture, that could be cool. capture them could... you know excise them whatever right wow damn well i mean yeah. i i like that i like that idea because I mean, this was your guys' first time playing through, so that's very strong. But I feel like if you play this game maybe 15 times, that might be fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It, you, you, I think you'll see when that could come up. But for me, that was a very scary card because it was like, I'm not just going to throw that down. Oh, no. Yeah, totally. That, that's a very strong card. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I think I think the cards, um, maybe that comes with just more experience of using them. I don't know. I would like to see this game actually played by other people. <laughs> Maybe to see um, how how they interpret the game in a way, but this game, for being extremely rules light, knows exactly what it is and what it's trying to do. Like, this is a very well tested game. The, like yeah. what like what you said earlier, Robert, is that how each scene must introduce a clue, uh, yeah. and the fact that we don't know what the horror is and it's it's all aiming to figure like being a mystery. It's like a reverse mystery, right? Where we introduce clues to figure out what the ending is. 
Yeah. Um, in a, in, a, in a very slow growing paced way. Like the pacing is super important in this game. And yeah. he's so good with it. So what do you guys think? Yeah, I actually, I, I mean, except for the cards. Yeah, the yeah. cards were seem mostly useless, mostly. Yeah. So uh, other than giving ideas, yeah. Would you guys? So would you play this game again? Oh, yeah, I, I would just play it without the cards. <laughs> yeah, the first time I did it, yeah, the first time I did it actually was with Leafington, and yeah. um, we did that on Monday, and we played it without the cards, just two player. And tell you what, the game worked like a like clockwork with with two players. Yeah. I don't see why yeah. the cards in there. Honestly. One, one interesting thing, like I don't know, I'm fairly familiar with Lovecraft. Like I feel like Eric, mm-hmm. you are as well, and Raz. Like it just it seemed like we kind of knew the tone and how kind of Lovecrafting stories work. Yeah, I would be interested to see this game played by people who don't know like literally anything about Lovecraft. Like someone who doesn't know what Cthulhu is, like. I've only I only know what I've been told. And that's just like their old gods and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that much about it. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't. I personally think the game would run almost like a charm with them. Um, yeah. I think yeah. I would. Yeah, I think Leaf, Leafington mentions here too uh, right now, and I I would I want to agree with what he says. Leafington mentions uh, it works great with two, but I would recommend playing it with watchers. I agree. I think having a watcher just be like feed me a line or like give me a detail. Or like, yeah. what's answer this question for me? Um, I think just having a, n- another thing there. I, I'm not gonna lie. My first time I read through the rules of this game, I thought the watcher would be like, "Man, I'm gonna be sitting here doing nothing. It's gonna be super boring." And it's yeah. not at all. It's yeah. It's, well, it works you're so, great. You're so you're actively engaged. Yeah. Now I don't know what would happen if I played with four people. Um, you know, and having two watchers. Yeah. I don't know. I I think you'd almost have to come up with like a. Like not necessarily a rule, but like an etiquette, because mm-hmm. I even felt bad interrupting. Yeah, yeah we should well, probably like th- that's there should probably part. be like a limit or something or some sort of like token thing. And we could replace cards with like, I mean, if we were to give it an idea, replace cards with like a token to interrupt the narrator and take control for a little bit. Yeah, I think I think maybe the cards come into play more with that because a lot of my cards did allow to me to assume control of narrator, and maybe that's yeah. why you you do it. Um, but at the same, I don't, I think, I think that's probably true. That That might be, yeah, Yeah. that it's probably for four or more people, but I know, I know right now for a three player game, this game is excellent. Um, but uh, I wanted to come back and quickly touch base with what Robert just said about, um, interrupting people when playing the game. You want to interrupt so badly. I know I did it all the time. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's just like. But it's really hard, like, when you interrupt somebody, you, you stop the stream of, like, consciousness and, like, putting on, like, the spooky mood in because you're answering a question. Yeah. So, like, it kind of it kind of robs the game a little bit of the horror, I guess. But overall, I think it's a much more richer experience. Uh, yeah. And, and I think, one, it's it's, it's on a, <laughs> I think uh, the narrator, if you play this game more, learns how to put pause, the pauses in to allow interruption totally totally i think i think um scene i don't know the how i would describe this term like scene cadence like how like the speed that you talk um the deliberate like deliberation of your words including your pauses for people to supplant details oh totally i think i think that's something that could be uh that's a skill earned for this game right that's not something you do normally you can't really practice you can't practice that unless you're playing Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, because there were there were moments where we did really well. I mean, I yeah. keep bringing it up, but like Raz is moving. Um, I mean, like there were certain moments when there was just that perfect time to add the detail, and you totally could, and it yeah. didn't get rid of the the cadence of the scene. Um, this, it yeah. it added to it. I just also I also wanted to add that this game would make an amazing like writer's tool. <laughs> Right, like if you wanted, like, to want, like you know, it's November. If you wanted to do, you know, Nanorimo, like, <laughs> well, you just, yeah, we just wrote, we like, just, a, you know, wrote... just put this into a novel. Done. <laughs> Sign it, Stephen King. <laughs> right, <laughs> and and we're done. Like, you know, this this is like a this is like a B minus horror movie, right? <laughs> Like, I mean, this was, like this, really was this was an a this is an a role-playing like story game fun but like if you put this to a movie it'd be like yeah i'd watch that right 
It's something like um, a cult western. Yeah. Where things go horrible. Um, I would love to see. It ends tragically always. Yeah. I I really want. I almost. I might write this story out. <laughs> like. I was thinking of doing something like that too. Like, but I would change like a few things. But. Yeah. Like, yeah. No. Story. Totally. Make it. Um. Make it of your own. Yeah. Of canaries and cows. A cult western. Yeah. I'll make the. <gasps> Damn it, Nick. Pretext society. Stop it. Yeah, no, like, but, Jennifer's. but, you know, from, we, we spawned this from nothing. We were, we we're the, the green weird icker and out, out from our, our dropping in this cavern, we, 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 you know, created this crazy story uh, that was super fun to do. And we did it in less than three hours. Yeah. Like we just, you know, I mean, you guys, I, I sent the rules to you guys this earlier today, but like, do you think you needed to read the rules to play this game? No, no. Like really, if you have a no. facilitator, you can pretty much just jam on this, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I hope um, I hope our viewers enjoyed the game because I think we're gonna wrap it up here. Uh, like final words, thoughts, uh, musings. Uh, follow me on Twitter and twitch.tv slash ic underscore res. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Demosthenes everywhere. I'm always online. Yeah, and um. So this has been episode nine of Once Upon a Game. Uh, I was your facilitator and I'm host of the show. I'm Eric. Uh, you can follow me at Eric Vulgaris uh, here on uh, Twitch or if you're on the VODs, um, just subscribe to me. But also follow me on Twitter and Twitch because I'd really appreciate it. And um, if you're interested in playing games with me, uh, if you're available at Mondays and Wednesdays at 9 Pacific to 12 and have a camera and all that kind of stuff, um, follow me on Twitter. Uh, message me there uh, that you're interested. I'm always looking for new players. Um, part of the reason why I do this is not only just to share my love of games and specifically like indie and GMS games, but because I want to show that this is a hobby that's actually really easy to get into. You don't have to buy a, a Shadowrun book and learn how to make a character. You can just sit down and play this game. Just, just go and, and have fun and get into this creative spirit that makes that makes gaming so so awesome so thank you so much for for taking some time to watch this and thank you so much to to my guests today and and friends uh raz and and robert for for playing with me so um yeah uh lovecraft desk a uh, great game i don't know when it's going to actually hit the stores because like i said the kickstarter just finished at the end of last month but um you know you watched our game uh it was fun but you know don't take our word for it and um, go go get the game and play it yourself and, and see what you think. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, take care. Um, I'll probably be streaming maybe something this weekend. Um, oh, I totally am. I'm streaming with someone else. Um, I forget his name right now. But uh, I will be playing Microscope this Saturday, uh, Saturday evening. Um, and I will be follow, look for that on, on Twitter. I'm so sorry I forgot the guy's name. AP Gaming, I think. AP Gaming, I think. Uh, so we'll be doing that. And um, that would be fun. So you can follow me there. So, anyways, good night, guys. Thanks a lot. Take care. I love you. Enjoy, Bye. enjoy everything. See you this weekend, Bye. or or see you see you next Monday for, for the next episode of Once Upon a Game. So, good night. <laughs>